everything all right? Yeah, not too bad. Fancy getting me out of bed at this time of morning. Uh, yeah, well, I've already been here half an hour, haven't I? It's freezing, isn't it? Absolutely. That, uh, got some machines? Yep, yeah, got three down there, yeah. Sure. Perfect. First things first, get the kettle on. Okie dokie. I'm often asked how I got into this very strange trade, and I actually have to tell people I never got into it, I never escaped. My father was known as Mr. Plastics because he bought the plastics industry to Eastbourne and my mother was an haute couture high fashion seamstress with one major problem. She had six monsters, six boys to look after and she was always inventing some wonderful products like the top and tail the plastic change mat, the waterproof buggy cape and when I grew up I grew up into this massive factory in Eastbourne making all these baby goods and so I never really got into the business I just never escaped from it. Oh I've known Alex for a long long time he's been coming here for, for years he's, he's a very very good engineer you know and very experienced and all my machines that come through the door I get him to do it. Well, I've got a classic um, haberdashery business here, so I sell knitting yarns, um, fabrics, buttons, but mainly sewing machines now. They, I, I buy and sell sewing machines, and there seems to be a resurgence in the need to sew, which is really good from my point of view, because it helps my business, obviously. Yeah, the colleges are doing it, and the schools are doing it, you know, and, and, and even young children at schools are, are coming in buying fabric, and some of them have even bought sewing machines, so I'm quite happy. People are always asking me uh, where the sewing machine came from it's in my job. I'm asked that almost daily. And it's a long, long story. And it starts way back when basically fabric came about. Uh, we stopped wearing animal hides and we started wearing fabric. And fabric was woven. And then we jumped through the centuries to something most people will recognise. And that is the big loom shuttle. And basically with fabric, you have you have the warp, the threads, the long threads, and you have the weft that going across, and the shuttle carries the weft thread. And now we're gonna start in 1840, and in 1840, there was a young lad called Elias Howe, and he was working in the textile mills, and he had a brainwave, this is the genius, and it made him one of the richest men in the world. And he made, out of this huge wooden shuttle that he was always repairing for the looms, he made a small metal shuttle. And he had the idea that if he could catch the one weave thread with the shuttle to catch the weft thread, he could create the first lock stitch sewing machine. He had a bit of a hiccup with the needle, because all needles before that had the eye at the top end. So he put the eye in the bottom end, which seems so normal now, but actually it was revolutionary. And he said to the law courts when he was being sued by everyone that it came to him in a dream. He was actually dreaming that Indians were attacking another Indian camp and they were throwing their arrows, spears through the tents or the teepees or the wigwams and they were catching the thread in the front and he then thought, genius, yeah, I'll put a hole in the bottom. And what happened was he made a machine that caught, that brought the thread down and caught the thread across and made the first lock stitch. And you're talking 1846. He patented those two principal ideas. And then we'll jump a hundred years later and we're seeing exactly the same mechanism in the 1950s where the shuttle is being moved across and the needle is coming down and it hasn't changed that basic principle. All right, Norman, I've got to get on. So let's get down to the workshop. Yeah, sure. Oh, before you go, I picked up a machine from an old lady and I think you could be interested in it. What, an old one? Yeah, a really old one. It's in a messy state, but you know. Come on, let's go and have a look. What do you think? Oh, wow. That's a, oh my God, that's an old mother of pearl German machine. Oh, let's have a look. What do you think? Oh, my God, I, it's an old German queen. It's amazing. Did the old dear say where she got it from? No, no I think she just got it from her mum, I think, or something like that. Yeah. It's one of the original mother of pearl, late Victorian, 19th century beauties. That's astonishing. 
Oh wow, I've never I've seen them on the internet. I've never seen one in real life. Early probably 1890s. Absolutely astonishing. That uh, Norman, I would love this in my collection. Well, it's got a few bits missing on it, but uh what do you think? I think it's just amazing. I would just love to have this. Well, I'm just trying to think. I don't know. You service my machines this yeah. week and it's yours. Just those ones there? Yeah. Yeah. You've got yourself a deal, Norman. When I was a teenager, I loved the idea of being a doctor, to be a surgeon. And when I told my dad, he already got me on an engineering course. He knew what I was going to do. And he said, the only thing you're going to be fixing is my sewing machines and you can operate on them. As soon as the engineering course finished, I jumped straight into the factory and we were on a boom. And we had the factory machines, we had the outworkers machines and I maintained and looked after them all through the 70s, 80s. But then the dark storm clouds rolled in with the cheap imports and everything changed. By the late 80s, we were struggling and then one day a man arrived on our doorstep with a beautiful padded palm leaf basket and he was offering it to us ready made for just a couple of quid when it cost us nearly 30 pounds to cut, make and trim the same thing and we just knew the door was closing. Ah, oh, it's a brilliant show the Ratonians put on. I love the costumes. Oh, thank you, Alex. Yeah, yes, I mean, they sweet. were amazing. We're always happy to please people, you know, and we get a, a lot of good feedback, so that's nice. I first got to know Alex over 30 years ago when he was um, part of the Simplantex company in Eastbourne. And what a shame that it had to fold when it did. Sewing machines are part of my life. It's my work for costume making, which I've done for over 30 years now and I make curtains for friends and family. So without my sewing machine, I'm not much good. It's crazy, I remember buying this around 40 years ago, new. Look at it now, still running, hopefully, perfectly. Come on baby, let's see. Yes. Oh yeah, Daphne, that is a perfect stitch. The 1840s, the birth of the sewing machine industry, there's a few ideas, a few patents. 1850s, hundreds of ideas, hundreds of patents. But then as the patents ran out, all of a sudden, any engineering firm could take all of the best ideas, like the teeth, like the needle, like the shuttle, put them all together, like the adjustable tension. And from the 1860s onwards, out came one person standing above the rest of the world, and that was Isaac Singer. And with mass production came the possibility of the lady in the house affording a sewing machine for the first time to make her clothes and everything. And by the 1900s, 300 million machines a year were being made. The largest industry the world has ever seen until the computer. Oh. Hello? Ellie? Yes, have you got a problem? No, no, no. Well, amazingly enough, I'm passing right past you tomorrow morning about 10.30. I can pop in then. I was already looking after a lot of the industrial sewing machines in other factories, so it was quite an easy step for me to jump from my own factory and other factories into the wide world and the domestic world. And when I started, I was 100% industrial because of my training, but now I'm about 20% industrial as all the factories have finally disappeared, and I'm probably about 80% domestic sewing machines. Oh, traffic's a nightmare. Oh, it always man. is on that Lewis Road, isn't it? Oh. So, but uh, still, I'm here now. Thank you. Thank you. So what? Um, what's up with the machine then? It's 
and it's sewing away and it's going out of sync. Ah, oh, yeah, it might be the timing. Yeah. That, uh, no problem, I'll sort them out. Um, fancy tea? getting a... Yes, please. <laughs> Milk and two sugars, please, Eddie. Okay. Thanks, Ellie. I can see exactly what's wrong. The timing's moved a bit, so 20 minutes should be no problem at all. We'll have it all perfect for you. I need to use a sewing machine because uh, I work at Glyndebourne at the moment uh, in the costume department. Well, I've been a costume maker for 40 years, working for places like The Globe, films, television, and now I'm working for Glyndebourne, world famous opera house. The very first time I spoke to Alex on the phone, that I had a machine that I needed repairing. And he said, I, uh, would you like me to come to you or would you like to bring it here? And I said, what's the difference? And he said, well, I knock on your door or you knock on mine, which I thought was a brilliant answer. The type of situations when I need to call on Alex was happened a few years ago when I was right in the middle of a huge job and a machine went down and I just couldn't afford the time to not be a machine. Called him, he was over within a couple of hours with a machine for me to use and he took my old machine away to mend it. Uh, consequently, because of that, I fell in love with the machine he brought and I bought it off him. <laughs> and it's the best machine I've got. Ellie? I found the problem with the machine. One of the little pins had just caught in, in the hook and that just made a nasty little gouge. But I've got that out, cleaned and oiled it and we're back in business. I'm just gonna run the star pattern, Ellie. And if it does that, we know it will do everything. Yeah, that is one perfect little sewing machine. Done and dusted. Another satisfied customer, now back to the workshop. This is the machine we got back from Norman's and it looks completely different now. It's all been beautifully renovated. I've made a few parts for it. This is the slide plate that goes in that was missing and that will go into there. And this is the shuttle that will drop into there so we can see that movement. And the last thing we need to see if it's going to actually work after a hundred years is the hand wheel which is part metal and part wood we're going to make um, basic wooden hand wheel there nice and simple um, but through the middle we want a metal shaft that's going to carry it and it's going to have a thread on the end there now all this is going to be metric because we're working in german this is a german machine so we're going to have metric so we're not doing the imperial side metric side and we're going to make those two pieces and see if the old beauty will actually make a stitch. <laughs> People think working metal, you think, imagine metal is hard, but actually with the right tools, you can get a fantastic effect. <laughs> Just going to work all the way along now, slowly, 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 cutting through this steel. Yeah, that, that should work a little treat. We've cut the thread in the end, now we just see if that's going to fit. Oh yeah, that's sweet. Oh, that's lovely. And now what we've got to do is we can find, sometimes we can find an old cotton reel. That doesn't look bad. Yeah, let's see, that, um, that baby should work a treat on there. Just lock that in. And this is gonna get real noisy in, in a minute. Unlike um, metal turning, wood turning's a lot messier and a lot noisier. 
Hopefully, that will push into there, that will push into there, beautiful. And now, we shall screw that in and see, for the first time for a long time, if this old girl is going to work. And let's see if she'll work. Look at that. That's the sound of the Victorian world coming back to life. And the final touch when I've restored one of these old beauties, I always put a little plate on there to say, restored by Alex Askaroff. And there we are, one Victorian masterpiece for my museum. Welcome to my sew -a -lot collection. When I was a kid on the way home from school, I saw six sewing machines in a skip and I ran home as fast as I could and I got my dad to drive me down, but the skip was gone and we missed them. And from then on, I started collecting very early 19th century sewing machines. And this is one of the earliest ones. Actually, this is a pre-American Civil War 1859 sewing machine, one of the very earliest. And the little toy I was holding is a German toy from the 1920s. evolving customer base now with some 30,000 customers in a huge varieties from fishnet making to harness making and some of the more interesting ones we have a I have a customer in Brighton who makes beautiful boned corsets in silks and satins but the surprise is it's not for the ladies it's for the men and then we have Doris who makes she makes waistcoats for ferrets ferret couture how crazy and she has a roaring trade and then we have the Queen's glove makers down the road and posh spice in South Street just making prom dresses that have come out of nowhere so business is booming Alex, how are you? Yeah, fine. It's freezing yeah, it's out there. I'm nice. nice to see you. They're doing a light show up at the town hall. Have you seen that? Yeah, on the, the neon Noel. It's, Amazing. It's really lovely, isn't it? Really What's glad you're here. It's the um, it's the overlocker again. Can you okay. have a look? Yeah. I'm an evening wear supplier, um, and we uh, predominantly stock uh, long formal wear, bridal wear, and uh, prom dresses, which is a great new up and coming area for us. In the last ten years, we're seeing a huge growth. I think this dress would be perfect for you. We can customise it. Uh, we can add some straps, which will be sewn right in the dress. Um, I think it's ideal, but a little bit long. Um, so what I'd like to do is, um, is for you to come along with some shoes and we can hem it for you. And everything we do is done here on the premises. Part of our personal service here at Posh is a customisation of our dresses and it's absolutely vital that someone can see how a dress fits. I've been the dressmaker here for 10 years and a key part of that is obviously having our machines working and I rely on Alex 100% to pop down whenever he can if we've got an emergency. Nikki, machines all perfect? Anything you need, just give me a ring. Will do. All right, Thanks see you later. so much, Alex. Bye. You know, you make everything a lot harder, you little sweetie. But that is our job done for today.
I've been in this trade nearly 40 years, I'm nearly 60 now, and all those years ago my father said to me a wonderful thing, he said, if you learn to love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And how right he was. Yes. 30 years I've been waiting to get you. You're gonna be very happy here, girl.